Step one, you make a yeast starter by first asking yourself, do I really need to make a yeast starter? And you answer that question by reading the directions on the yeast package, which will specify pitch rate. Step two, add 1500 milliliters of water to a pot and set it to a boil. While it's heating, measure 150 grams of dry malt extract. This will create a starter with an initial gravity of 1037, which is exactly where you want it. This is a bit more water and DME than a lot of generic recipes call for. I'll explain why we've increased the amount at the end of this video. Step three, once the water is boiling, cut the heat, stir it to create a vortex and add the DME. Stir until dissolved, then heat back up to a boil. You'll hold the boil for a few minutes and then we'll move on to step four. Clean a two liter flask, then sanitize it with a bit of star sand. This part is really important because if you contaminate your starter, it'll also contaminate your beer. The bubbles are supposedly fine, but I like to shake out as many as possible before moving on. Though if you're filming, be careful with the camera angle during this part so you don't become an internet meme. Step five, add the wort to the flask and then sanitize a bit of foil or a foam stopper and cover the flask opening. Either put it in the refrigerator for two hours or into a bowl with ice water. Agitate to speed up cooling. Step six, once the wort is room temperature, pitch your yeast. Our go-to yeast is White Labs since they have the best selection and our homebrew shop stocks a ton of different strains. Shake well, again, being mindful of the camera angle, sanitize the package and add it to the flask. I got a bit of yeast on the side of the flask, so I'm going to throw a glove on, sanitize it and shake the flask to wash the yeast down into the liquid. Step seven, this one is important. Toss the stir bar into some sanitizer, then dump it out onto your hand to make the biggest possible mess on the table. It's important to constantly be marked marking your brewing territory, and this is a great way to do it. Step eight, reapply the sanitized foil to your flask, then dramatically whip out a sweet new claw hammer stir plate from your back pocket. Plug it in and marvel at how awesome the new graphics are before transferring the flask to the stir plate. Step nine, crank up the speed and leave it set for 24 to 48 hours. Step 10, once the starter has finished fermentation, you can either pitch it straight into your beer, which is actually what White Labs recommends, or you can leave it sit for a while so the yeast settles out. Then decant by dumping off most of the liquid at the top, shake to reincorporate the sludge at the bottom, and then pitch. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I used 1500 milliliters of water and 150 grams of dry malt extract. This provides for an inoculation rate and a growth factor that are more in line with what an ideal yeast starter would look like according to some online yeast starter calculators. More info on that on our site in the link below. You can also find our awesome stir plate linked below and I'll link to White Labs as well. Thanks for watching.